Hello homemakers, I had a fun idea today. We are gonna play around with using AI, artificial intelligence, to help us visualize some Betty Crocker recipes. I was inspired by a video New York Times Cooking did a few weeks ago where they used artificial intelligence to help develop Thanksgiving recipes. I've been playing around with this AI system called Dolly that takes different inputs that you type in and creates a brand new image from scratch. I thought this would be perfect to play around with the Betty Crocker recipe card library because there's whole sections in this library that have no photography. If you watch this channel, you know that I really use the photos a lot while I'm cooking because the recipes themselves are very concise and I need photo reference to understand like what I'm doing. Is it the right texture? Is it the right color? How big do I cut things? How do I present the final dish? So. Um, I thought it'd be fun to use Dolly to help develop images for these cards that don't have any. <laughs> I picked a few cards from the section Convenient Oven Meals. This is what Betty Crocker has to say about this section of the library. Something's in the oven for dinner is one of the coziest, most comfortable thoughts in the world. So we hear our menus planned with foods that can be assembled ahead of time and baked together and come from the oven all at once. For women like you with a crowded schedule of other activities, me, these main dishes, vegetables, breads, and desserts are matched and coordinated with oven times and temperatures to help you get family dinners down to a science. Time managed for modern home schedules, they mean more time for you and less last minute stress and kitchen clutter. And don't forget on chilly winter days how dinner in the oven makes your kitchen seem welcoming, extra warm as toast, and twice as fragrant. Extra warm as toast. Thanks, Benny. <laughs> the thing about Dolly is that it's kind of the, the results of the images can be a bit surreal, a bit whimsical. It's not always um, true to life, what, it, what it's able to come up with. So um, they might not look that appetizing, we'll find out. Uh, but we'll give it a try. At the very least, it'll be um, fun and goofy. <laughs> All right, so I have Dolly open here. I wanted to start with a card called Spring Fever Supper which has a baked ham with spinach stuffing, baked sweet potatoes, pineapple, grape, lettuce salad, and baked banana splits. So I'm gonna start just with like, let's just type in baked ham with spinach stuffing and see what comes out. Oh my God. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, so what it's developed here is it seems, I mean, it, it's trying to stuff a ham with spinach. So it almost seems like it's a rolling. It's taken a ham and, and rolled spinach within it, but it doesn't look like a complete spiral. <laughs> or like this one looks like they've, you've somehow like cut a hole in the ham and stuffed it. <laughs> Interesting. And like there's like these chunks of stuff in the spinach. Let's see what it says you're supposed to put in the spinach stuffing. It's supposed to be spinach, celery, mushrooms, onion, salt, and pepper. So yeah, I don't know if any of those pink bits could be mushrooms maybe? <laughs> what you're actually supposed to do on the recipe is um, use sliced ham. So it says place one ham slice in an ungreased shallow baking dish, spread with the spinach mixture, and then top with the second ham slice, and then you bake that and serve it with mustard sauce. I wonder what would happen if I added mustard sauce to and mustard sauce. But yeah, it, it definitely was trying to stuff stuff a whole ham with spinach. And this recipe is actually for more of like a, a ham and spinach layered casserole. Ew! Okay, wait, what happened? <laughs> this, this is what I'm talking about. It's like, it, it's like pulling content from all over the internet that appears to be tagged with these words and, and it's creating a new image. And so for whatever reason, it's, it's trying to make spinach stuffing, but it's made it like really pink and almost like, like mold looking. Um, but I'm excited because this one, they added mustard sauce to the side, which is really cool. The mustard sauce is supposed to have um, butter, flour, salt, pepper, milk, nutmeg, horseradish, and then prepared mustard. This looks kind of more like a curry or something. It's not really, I don't know. It's looking a little too dark to be mustard. Um, and there's no parsley or anything in the recipe. So it's interesting that they added some like flecks of green to the mustard sauce. Whoa, I also just realized that there's something weird happening in the center of this <laughs> yeah. Is that supposed to be like a bone? 
I don't know what's going on in the middle there. <laughs> and I don't really know what's going on with these like three clumps in the mustard sauce. <laughs> Gross. Uh, yeah, that one looks really uh, mustardy. <laughs> yeah, see how the gravy butter is kind of disappearing into the ham? Yeah, weird stuff like that happens with the with Dolly, but right? It's it's kind of fun. <laughs> okay, it's supposed to be served with a baked banana split, so I just want to see what Dolly thinks a baked banana split looks like. Oh gosh. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. So what we're supposed to do is cut four peeled firm bananas into quarters, place bananas and maraschino cherries into a greased baking dish, brush bananas with lemon juice, sprinkle with brown sugar, dot with butter, drizzle rum flavoring and bake uncovered for 15 minutes, and then top each serving of bananas with coconut ice cream and a cherry and spoon brown sugar sauce all over ice cream. So I think this one was a little bit easier. Um, there's probably a lot more reference imagery for it to work with. Um, banana splits are kind of a common thing. It's interesting, it's kind of doing a bananas foster situation, which is not unlike what this recipe was calling for, you know, with some um, rum and brown sugar, and you're kind of creating that sauce that goes on top of the banana. Um, it knew to include a maraschino cherry, which I'm surprised by. Oh God. <laughs> What is this blob? <laughs> Why is it black? <laughs> I'm assuming this is supposed to be chocolate sauce, but it's interesting how not appetizing this looks. Um, and the banana in this one has been cut up and layered with caramel in between, <laughs> uh, which is an interesting choice. Okay. <laughs> Another one I like. Um, the lighting varies a lot. So this one looks almost like a photo that someone took at a diner or a restaurant. Like it has like the lighting of a poorly lit room. It doesn't look like proper food photography. So I think that's really interesting that it sometimes pulls in that kind of information and works with it. Um, but yeah, this is a big old mess here. It doesn't, ooh, this one's split. This one's not bad. The banana is actually split. And the chocolate drizzle is really nice. Doesn't have the maraschino cherry, but overall, I'm I'm kind of impressed with how how Dolly created the baked banana splits. <laughs> okay, let's try another card. All right, so this card is called Ground Beef Glamorized, and it is a recipe for top hat beef bake, escarole radish cucumber salad, salty sticks and baked fruit compote. I'm very interested to see what, I mean, I can type in top hat beef bake. It's not gonna know what that is because this is a title Betty Crocker has made up. <laughs> oh, it's like a pot pie. <laughs> wow, okay. What is happening here? That is like, kind of like a meatball, <laughs> a big, a big meatball in a, ceramic casserole dish with what looks like kind of bread on top, um, like a piece of puff pastry. <laughs> That's more of a kind of pot pie. There's like a stew with a single carrot and a, I'm assuming red onion. <laughs> and then the, the pot pie top as usual. I definitely thought pot pie. I'm wondering if Top Hat refers to something like that. Like if there's recipes out there on the internet for, for Top Hat, blah, 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 and they are pot pies. <laughs> but let's see what you're supposed to do. Mix breadcrumbs, milk, egg, ground beef, cottage cheese, horseradish, salt, and pepper. So you're making kind of a, a meatloaf-esque meat mixture, spreading it in a greased baking pan and baking and covered for one hour. Then you're preparing potato buds instant puffs and dropping potatoes as like little um, spoonfuls onto the meat, sprinkling cheese on top of the potatoes, and then topping each mound with the tomato wedge and baking it 15 minutes longer. Let me try to describe it for Dolly. So I'll say um, ground meat casserole with potato mounds that's what betty calls them <laughs> potato mounds and tomato garnish oh this is probably more accurate to what it would look like right <laughs> 
You have definitely a ground beef with other stuff at the bottom. This one, it looks like it tried to layer potato, tomato, potato, tomato, <laughs> which is kind of cute. <laughs> but the tomato on top does look fresh and um, part of the recipe is that you put it back in the oven and bake it so it wouldn't be as crisp looking of a tomato. It's interesting that potato mound turned into that shape. <laughs> okay, another one. It seems like they got cheese involved, even though I didn't say to use cheese. <laughs> These potato mounds are really funny looking. They look more like, um, like an uncooked potato pancake. <laughs> and then this one has potatoes kind of stuck on the side. These actually look like they have a hard enough edge that it might not be a mashed potato. It's like a, just a slice of potato. <laughs> Um, all right, so what goes with our glamorized ground beef? A baked fruit compote and salty sticks. The salty sticks are basically just bread slices that you butter and sprinkle with salt and bake. <laughs> and then the baked fruit compote is currant jelly, pear halves, peach halves, plums, and vanilla ice cream. What if I tried to get like a one photo as if it was on the front of the card that encompasses all of this? So, <laughs> what happened here? <laughs> it put the cucumbers and the radish on the beef. <laughs> and I have some um, biscuits on the side and then seems like mashed potatoes on the side also garnished with a cucumber. <laughs> Um, this one looks more normal. Okay, we have a radish salad on the side, we have biscuits on the side, and then we have what seems like ground beef on something. I don't know what that is. Those are not mashed potatoes, those look like, um, french fries. <laughs> but there's mashed potatoes over here. And then more radish and cucumber on the plate. Oh, where's the baked fruit compote? Is that supposed to be the baked fruit compote that has the cucumbers and radish? It seems like it was, I gave it too many things. Okay, this one has mashed potatoes. It seems like it has a real bread stick. Remember I said bread stick, not biscuit. <laughs> it has the cucumber radish salad, another weird lump, the meat. <laughs> so yeah, it wasn't able to really put the meat and potato casserole together. And then in this corner, there is a hint of something that could be fruit compote. So that's probably the closest one we've gotten. Yeah, it really didn't know how to how to get the fruit compote in the mix. Mmm, interesting. <laughs> Alright, for this last one, I'm gonna do a card for slow baking savory stew. Which the stew is pretty normal, but it is served with cheese stuffed celery, which there's no recipe for. She just assumes I should know how to do that. And <laughs> biscuit fan tans and a citrus loaf cake. I'm really need Dolly's help visualizing what the cheese stuffed celery and biscuit fan tans should look like. So we'll start there. <laughs> um, okay, so this one, it doesn't even look like they attempted to stuff the celery. This is also not the shape that celery should be. <laughs> it's kind of crumbled something that doesn't even look like cheese to me. And there's like pimento maybe inside. This one's interesting because it it seems like it took some celery stalks and put them on the side with a bit of cheese sauce, but then the center is some other white thing stuffed with cheese sauce. But yeah, I wasn't I wasn't imagining cheese sauce. For some reason I thought it'd be a colder like cream cheese that you'd be filling the celery with. Something a bit more stable. <laughs> this one is just four celeries on a plate with a with a bit of something in the middle. <laughs> and another one where it almost looks like Whole, like a whole celery heart <laughs> and I don't know what these round things are. I think they're supposed to be bell peppers because this looks like a bell pepper stem but why is it so perfectly cylindrical? <laughs> what is going on there? So yeah this didn't really help me too much. I still really don't know what cheese stuffed celery is supposed to look like. <laughs> Let's see if it knows what a biscuit fan tan looks like. What it says to do, which is confusing to me, is that you make this quick baking mix into a soft dough. You kind of um, laminate butter into the dough. So you like spread some butter on the dough, fold it, spread over half, fold it again. So you're starting 
to go in the direction of like a how a croissant would be made, I think, or like a puff pastry. Then you cut it, presumably with a round cutter, <laughs> place two biscuits, cut sides up in an ungreased muffin cup, bake 10 minutes. So I'm assuming you're doing like two rounds of biscuits in a muffin cup, cut sides up. Like you're putting two biscuits, two biscuit rounds like this in a muffin tin like that. And then I'm assuming they fan out when they bake. And that's the fan tan <laughs> element. <laughs> Let's see what Dolly came up with. Okay, nothing like that. I mean, it's kind of getting the sh a shape. Wait, is fan tan a cookie? Because I've seen a cookie shaped like this before. Yeah, they're all giving cookie to me. <laughs> None of them have the flakiness of a biscuit. I mean, it could be that Dolly is taking the, the British word for biscuit, which is cookie, <laughs> and not the American, which is like a fluffy bread roll. But I am curious if a fan tan, let me Google it. <laughs> fan tan. No, but that's what the biscuits are supposed to look like. Oh. Well, how come when I Google Fantan Biscuit, you can see exactly what Betty wanted me to do, but Dolly doesn't want to show me anything that looks like these. <laughs> so then I think we should just try to get the whole meal together on a plate. So I want to see what it looks like to be served. Dinner with beef stew. Is there anything special about the stew, I should say? It really is just like a very traditional stew recipe. Biscuit, fan tans. Let's see if it does that. Celery stuffed, what is it called? Cheese stuffed celery. And, and citrus loaf cake. Oh, interesting. <laughs> we do have a bowl of stew, something stew-esque. This, these could be biscuits in the top. I don't know what that is. <laughs> this seems like the celery is in the middle this time, but it's been cooked and it looks absolutely vile. And then we have a plate where it looks like they were served some stew and some biscuit. <laughs> I don't know what utensil that's supposed to be, like kind of in between a fork, a spoon, and a knife. <laughs> um, and then I'm assuming that this is the loaf cake and this is the citrus. It did not create a citrus loaf cake. Um, they put them as two separate things in the photo. <laughs> Okay, another one where the stew is served on a plate and it's garnished with citrus. <laughs> and then we have two things that kind of look like biscuits. And I don't know what that is in the background. That is quite a mystery to me. Um, so yeah, overall it had trouble kind of combining citrus loaf cake. Interesting, interesting. Again, biscuits and loaf cake on a plate. Maybe that's celery soup in the background? Took, you know, took a turn <laughs> and stew, another plate of stew in the foreground. I'm surprised by um, how much they're trying to serve me stew in the incorrect vessel. I really think that stew should be served in a, in a bowl, <laughs> not on a plate. <laughs> All right, this is fun. I can't say that the photos were super helpful <laughs> that we came up with, but you know, there are some there's some interesting ideas in there that help me kind of visualize how these meals are supposed to look. So um, I think it was worthwhile. I would love to do it again. There's so many cards in here that don't have photos. So we can make this a whole series if you're interested. And I would love for you to comment below which of the meals I looked at today you would like me to actually try to cook because I could try to make the whole convenient oven meal start to finish. And then we can compare my final results with what Dolly thinks the final results should be. So let me know down below which of the recipes we looked at today you want me to try. Thank you so much for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you aren't already. And until next time, happy homemaking.